All right, guys, welcome back to 243 Outdoors. My name is Josh. Today is gonna to be a continuation of the last video where we did some casting. Today, we're gonna to do a little bit of powder coating. As you can see on the table, I've got most of it done. I even tumble lubed some of the Lee 309 230s. So they've been sitting on this paper for, I guess, about a day and a half, and I can probably package those up. But today, we are gonna concentrate on powder coating these nines. These are the NOE 358133 round nose and we'll get started. First here. thing we're gonna do today is plug in our toaster oven. I have a oven thermometer in there and when the thermometer is straight up, it's 350 degrees and that's typically when I get started. I'm gonna set this box of projectiles on top of the oven to start warming them up. We have a couple pans and some parchment paper we'll be using today and we'll use the shake and bake. Keep all my powder coating materials inside a sealed tub. Everything is bagged up inside there to keep the moisture out, keep it as dry as possible. I also shake up my projectiles in a piece of PVC pipe. It seems to generate pretty good static and it holds quite a few. All right, so today we'll be using some Eastwood Ford Light Blue and I like to add just a splash of the Harbor Freight Red. I bought that powder originally and I never liked using it, so I just kind of use it as a uh, filler and it just gives it a little bit of red speckle and I think it looks pretty good. I'm gonna get out some fresh powder coat for today. I've been using the same batch for quite a while, so uh, humidity messes with it a little bit. So uh, every little bit I'll uh, swap it out. It takes very little. We'll just put about two little spoons worth in there and then just put a splash of that in there and get shaking. All right, so I put about a spoon and a half of the blue and about a quarter spoon of the red in there. I'm gonna take these here and make it into two batches. So uh, I'll pour about half those in there and shake them up. Put our lid on and we'll shake it up. for about a minute or two and you should be good. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is sift it out. We're gonna need a container and a little wire basket. So everything should be shook up good. Take our top off. I'm gonna sift it out and we're gonna dump it out here. I like my bullets standing up. Um, a lot of people leave them lay them down. I kind of like the prettier bullets. I don't like any blemishes on them if I can avoid it. So I'll take a pair of these tweezers here and then I will stand them all up. We can also use ice cube trays. I have the silicone ice cube trays. The nine millimeter fit in there, but it's very tight. I tend to like to stand the 30 cal stuff up in these. So uh, for the 300, out I use these and then uh, even the lead 230s will stand up in these but today we're just going to stand them up on this. Okay now that we got to stand them up I'm going to make sure everything is not touching each other because they tend to stick and I really don't like that. Okay, our oven's preheated, so we're gonna set these in for 15 minutes. And while they're in there, we'll get the uh, next batch ready to go. first batch is in the oven. We've got our second batch already with plenty of time to spare. And then if I had some more, we could also get another tray ready. But the 15 minute cook time gives you plenty of time to get the next batch already. Okay, so 15 minutes is up. We'll go ahead and pull these out. I let them air cool. I do not water quench them. Some people do, just personal preference. I just let them air cool. They'll be Cool the touch here in just a few minutes. We'll go ahead and put our next tray in. All right, 
there in the oven and we'll set our timer again. For so here is a close up. They are just out of the oven. All nice and shiny. Coverage looks really good. So we'll let these cool down and cure for just a little bit and then we'll run them through a sizer. Okay, as far as sizing goes, there's a couple different products you can use. Lee has basically a kit that you buy in the desired size. So like this is for 38 Special, so you buy a 0 .358, 0 .359, whatever you want. I have several of these in 224, 225, 358, 452, and et cetera. But it, can, it includes this container, and then it has your sizing die inside and a little pusher. And then you'll mount this in your press and then push your bullets to the die and collect them in the container. What we're gonna be using for these nines today are the NOE Universal. And this is a kit you buy. And once you have the Universal kit, all you have to do is to buy these bushings. This is a 356, that's what we'll be using today. This is the body that we'll be using and it's currently set up for 309. So we're gonna change this out. So there's two things we're gonna change on this. This push through tube is a smaller diameter. So we need the larger one for the uh, 356 diameter. And we'll slide that in and snug it down. And then we're gonna change out our bushing and put this 356 bushing in. So whenever you get a new caliber or need a new size, all you need to buy is a bushing and a pusher and then everything else is included in the kit. So to use this, I use my Lee Breech Lock Challenger press. This is my first press. This is the older press of the two. I have the classic cast now, but I tend to do all my sizing on this press. It's starting to get a little bit of age and a little bit loose from pushing all the bullets through it. So I've just pretty much dedicated it for sizing. The NOE die screws up from the bottom. The Lee's screw in from the top, but they, they do the same thing. So we'll screw that up a pretty good ways like that. Then we'll take one of these Lee containers I have and you'll place it on top. And then our pusher snaps in to where the shell holder goes. I have a little business card in here and uh, I can, small amounts, I can size and watch and this keeps them from falling out. And then if you have a larger batch, you could toss the top on. So when the powder coated projectiles come out of the oven, they're typically running 361, 362, somewhere in that range. And then once we run them through the sizer, it gets them down to our 356. So that's what it's doing. It's just reaming it through a small hole and making them all round and uniform. There's always been a debate whether to lube bullets before you size them. And from my experiences, when the sizing die is brand new, they tend to be a little rough. And I'll either take some of the Imperial sizing wax and a Q-tip and put a little bit inside the sizing die. And if that doesn't work, I'll take a little bit of this Lee resizing lube. I'll place just a thin film around the edge of a butter bowl and I'll put my projectiles in it and shake them up and it just gives them a little bit of lube that makes them go through the sizer okay. And then when I'm done, I'll just kind of shake them off in a uh, microfiber towel to kind of get some of that lube wiped off. Um, I'm willing to bet today we won't need to do that. They'll probably just slide right through, no problems. Okay, so our second batch is ready to come out of the oven. We'll just place it on this silicone mat upside down so it don't burn anything. And we'll get our oven unplugged. This is just an older toaster oven. It's pretty much garbage. The uh, timer doesn't work and I just leave it set and I plug it and unplug it to turn it on and off. But it, it holds decent temperature. It kind of fluctuates between 300 and 350. So. Here's what we got straight out of the oven. Good coverage. I think they look pretty nice. We'll let them sit and cool a little bit and we'll go over here and see if we can size some of the first batch. All right, let's size a few of these. Pull this top off and you can see them coming out. If you're using a flat nose projectile, you may have to get something to keep the bullets from stacking. Uncle Jim has made what he called the Cobra, and it's a little piece of pipe in there. It has a point bent over and it pushes the bullets over. It keeps from popping the lid off. These bullets are not lubed and they're going through pretty good. Just a little bit of effort. And 
and there's what we have. It smooths that skirt out pretty good, rounds everything up, and they look pretty nice. So what I'll do typically is I'll have a YouTube video or something up on the computer screen and just set this in my lap and it doesn't really take any time and you can run through a lot. The uh, Lee APP press is another option for sizing. You can do very high volumes very fast in that setup. I currently do not have one of those, but maybe in the future we might look into that. So I'm going to sit here and finish these. These are ready to load. They are... Looking good. There's a close-up of one. The finished product looks very nice. That Ford light blue coats very nice, and I think that splash of Harbor Freight red just gives it a little bit of a pop. It just breaks the blue up. So that's going to be all for today's video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.